got no home, ain't got no shoes, ain't got no money, ain't got no class, ain't got no skirts, ain't got no croaking. Got my hair, got my head, got my brains, got my ears, got my eyes. The way that we've laid out these breadboards is sort of in this natural sequence of the way our CPU is going to run. So we start up here with the clock, and the clock is vital to all parts of the CPU, obviously, but it's especially important to the program counter because it keeps it, well, counting. And the program counter will then act as the counter for what step we're on, and that step will act as the address for our RAM module. So it'll go into the RAM module and fetch from the RAM module the current execution that we're doing, the current instruction, and then that instruction will be saved here in the instruction register. So we start up here with the clock and we go through all these components in order until we end at the instruction register. And of course, all these components are going to need to communicate each other, communicate with each other, and they communicate with each other through a bus. And so we have our bus here. Now, this is not the only thing they're going to be talking to. There's other components. For example, the ALU, which adds a number A to a number B. Now, of course, these numbers have to come from somewhere, and of course, they come from the RAM module eventually, but you can't both be accessing the number A and number B, two different 8-bit values at the same time from the RAM module. You can only access one. So it has to be saved somewhere, and that will be saved in the A register or accumulator. And then for the B value, we'll likewise have the B register. So then when we're done adding, we need to output that number somehow. So we'll use this, which is our binary to decimal converter. And it'll show whatever number we want in decimal. We just finished building this. Now, if we could just connect this up to the bus, though, it'll show whatever data is on the bus in decimal form, which is not what we want, though. This is only for outputs. So we need a way to say, oh, we need to load an output, and we're outputting an output right now. So we will have an output register. And the register, we can load a binary value into the register and then connect that up to this binary to decimal converter and then it'll output whatever's in the register in decimal form. So then what we'll say is, oh, add the numbers A and B which are currently in the A and B register in the ALU, then the output of the ALU, load that into the output register and the output register will connect up to here and we'll see that output, the addition of A and B, whatever number that is, in decimal form on these displays. So what we've built here is a minor CPU architecture, a basic CPU architecture. And we still have some holes here. Of course, we still have this hole, which is another breadboard. And that breadboard will fit the controller slash sequencer. And what that does is it controls all the different modules and connects them up together and basically makes the CPU work. It's perhaps the most magical part of the CPU. But for now, we have these three blank breadboards. And what I want to do with these blank ones today is fill them up. And these are all registers. Now, the good thing about registers is they're all basically the same. And the way that we're using them, they're all basically going to be the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build one for you guys. And then you guys can just watch this video three times and build the other two. Now, all of our registers are going to start exactly the same. We're going to have two 4-bit registers. Now, I only have 4-bit register chips, which is the reason why I'm using this. But you can buy 8-bit uh, registers and only have one chip. Now, you may see some people that if they do an A register, they'll put a three-state buffer over here or something. Um, so that this way, they have some floating points in case this needs to connect to the bus. Now, that's not necessary because this register will only be taking input from the bus. It won't be putting anything on the bus. You only need a three-state buffer if you're going to be putting data onto the bus. And this won't. All the registers are only going to be taking input from the bus. So that means that none of these registers are going to need three-state buffers the way that I'm designing the CPU. Now, each of these chips is a 4-bit register, so we're going to use them in combination to make a single 8-bit register. And we're also going to put an LED array over here, so that this way we can see what's constantly in this register at all times. So let's go over how we hook this up. Okay, so the chip that I'm using is the SN74LS173, and it is a 4-bit D-type register with three state outputs. And so that means that we already have a tri-state buffer on each one of these outputs, Q, now, I'm not going to use that because if I have the tri-state buffer acting as a buffer, then I won't be able to see what's on the Q outputs at all times. And I always want to be able to see what's inside this register at all times to help with debugging and things like that. So I'm actually going to tie down the three-state outputs so that Q is constantly showing the value inside this register. And the way you do that is with M and N. Now, I know here it doesn't say it, but M and N are actually active low and they're anded together so if you want the three state output on meaning that q is showing the value that's inside the register then you want m and n both tied to ground 
Now remember the way that a D-type register works is it'll only load data from these data lines when the enable line is low and the clock signal is on the rising edge. So the way that we enable this chip is with G2 and G1. Now these are both active low signals, so when G2 and G1 are both tied low, then that means the chip is now enabled and on the next rising edge clock pulse, the data lines will load in the data um, into Q. Now we have the clear line which is not active low, but we're not going to tie the clear line because I want to be able to tie everything, all the clear lines in our CPU together so this way with a single push of a button we can clear everything on the CPU so we're going to just have a wire hanging out there for now with the clear line. So everything here is pretty standard. Um, M and N are going to be tied low. The clear line is going to be a wire that we're just going to probably have on high most of the time. Then G2 and G1 are our enable lines. So G2 and G1 are going to be tied together to a single line that will either be high or low to determine whether this chip will be enabled or not, where it's an active low signal. Then this clock is going to go to our clock. Now for the Q signals, we'll go over how we wire that up right now. Now the M and N lines on both of these are going to be tied to ground so that we constantly trigger the three state buffer. And the other thing to note is that the Q values on these registers are not only going to go to the ALU or output display or whatever have you, but they're also going to go to LED so that we can constantly see what is in the register at all times. So overall this diagram gives us a pretty good look at what we need to know in order to hook up the registers. So all that's left to do is to actually hook them up. So we'll just do that now. So to begin, we can just start by putting our LED display down. So to start, I'm going to connect the Q lines, which are all on this side of the register, up to the LED display. So next, I'm going to add all of our ground points. So M and N on both of these chips are going to be tied to ground, as well as the ground point. So everything's built here, um, besides the fact that our data lines are not connected to the bus. But since we're not connecting this to the bus yet, we're just going to put uh, simple wires for now to represent the bus. So we can just go through and connect up all these wires. All right, so the two lines I've separated here is the load line, which is an active low, and the clear line, which is just a normal line. So normally we want the clear line connected to low, so this way that these chips are not clearing. Now to test this, we're actually going to need our clock as well, so that this way we can hook up the clocks together. All right, so all I've done here is I've connected the power lines together here, and this is gonna be our clock signal, which we can just connect to the clock pin here. So ideally, if we connect power, it should work. Okay, the clock signal comes on. There's nothing currently in the register, so let me just set a pattern here of changing 1010, zero, zero, and we will load that in. And it should have loaded in. I'm really not, okay, I'm not sure why. Maybe this LED display is backwards. There you go, all right. So you can see that we get the pattern out here. And you can see that we can change, because this is going to be connected to the bus, so we can change whatever we want on these lines. All right, so now we have all zeros on the line, but because we have, oh wait, I have the load line connected still. All right, now that the load line is on high, if we change what's on the bus, you can see that what's actually inside the registers doesn't change. So this will hold our value. So the next step would be to take this register and connect it up to something like our ALU, where this could represent, where this value here could represent the B value. And we connect that up to these yellow wires here. And we can get, a, we can get our ALU module just that much closer to being done. And then of course, we'd have to build another one. So we take another one and connect it up here for the A value, and then we connect to these blue wires. And then we'd have a register for both values of the ALU. So I've gone ahead and I've hooked up these lines to our B value here. And you can see that I've added some notes. So this is register B, meaning that's the register that holds the B value for the ALU, just so that we don't get too lost anymore. And then I have this line represents our clear line, and this line represents our active low load line. So the next step would just be to build register A, and then I've already sort of built, um, for this output register, I've already sort of built the output register. Um, but I think I'm going to finish these off camera because this is relatively boring and you guys see how this is going to finish and how this is going to end. So I'm just going to finish the rest of this off camera. So my name is Kiel Mohadeen and I'll catch you guys later.